the Fishing Gurus podcast. Do you reckon, Steve, first day of practice, what's going to happen? Not a lot. Difficult? <laughs> no, joking. I think it'll be all right. You reckon? Yeah, bit of a slow start and then it'll improve a bit as we go on. What do you reckon, like, long term throughout the week? What do you think will happen by, like, sort of Thursday, Friday? I think it will get better every day and it will become more of a pole match. No, you've been here before, haven't you? Yes. And what was that like? It was terrible at the start. I remember on the first day, actually two of us blanked flipping out so and the rest didn't catch a lot like one or two little barbel and right. then it just got better and better caught nothing on the pole till friday and then by saturday sunday it was uh, quite a bit of pole fishing in the last right. couple of hours of the match awesome you excited cam yeah looking forward to it now. first day of practice mm, excited find out what box we're into Beautiful. Where Let's are we go. going? Where are we going? Five. Box five. 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 Well, Can't then. believe you two are on an end. <laughs> <laughs> We're just on our way. Mixed our ground bait up this morning. It's currently 15.5 degrees and we're cruising at about 50 mile an hour and six feet. Yeah, yeah. Excited? Really excited. Looking forward to seeing what there is on the match length. Can't wait. Can't wait. What, what's your predictions for today? I think I don't. I think it'll be just steady, like getting into it, learning what fish are there, um, seeing what distances and stuff. But really looking forward to it. First day. This is the first obstacle. We have to lift all our gear over this big wall. You didn't do much lifting, mate. I'm heavy lifter, me. Good job you got me. Strong like a bull. Yeah, looks nice in box five. Some of me doing it. Yeah, got loads, mate. It's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> Final day of practice done. That were a good day, wasn't it? Yeah, good learning day today, wasn't it? Mm. It's been a tough week. Not a lot of fish on the match length at all. But this venue notoriously gets better. And today, the Friday, the day before the match, lived up to it. A few more fish topping, weren't there, when we started? Mm. And everyone just thought, mm, today might be... It's been good. It's been good. What's um, both fishing tomorrow? Yeah, we're both in. Both in. Um, the team is Will Raisin, Cameron Hughes, Myself, James, Steve, I mean, great, and Simon Willsmore's reserve for tomorrow. They'll probably fish on the Sunday. Um, love sight of it, he's been awesome this week. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. Week, yeah. But it's hard to, it, to make the team. Yeah, it's hard. I think we say, I have not fished with him much, but he contributes a lot, doesn't he? Yeah. He fishes a bit different to everyone, and it's been awesome. Good he's not fishing tomorrow. Um, but this is the hardest bit, you know, folks. You can see the match length behind us, you can see all our gear piled on the wall. It's like a what? Four foot wall, you gotta lift all your gear over. Yeah, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna put it all in van now, aren't you? Yeah, as soon as I just lifted it all up here. <laughs> um, we'll probably not update you folks now until Sunday. Depends how we do tomorrow, if we get a chance we will, but it's pretty intense from now, so. Um, That's it, go back home and sort last few bits and bobs out and get ready for tomorrow. Can't wait, bring it on.
I like. I've made the effort. I hope you can see Absolutely that. Absolutely fantastic, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, firstly, mate, congratulations. Thank you very much, mate. Look at what Toby's got on. Yeah, I've made Show the effort. Showed, showed made like the effort. <laughs> got the lions on. Yes, Absolutely, of course they are. It's all right. <laughs> Everything all right? Yes, mate. Yes, very good. Very good. More importantly, how are you, like? How are you feeling? Oh, fantastic, mate. Literally not really sank in yet. I had a big outburst of tears when uh, when manager Mark come down and told me. Oh, and then brilliant. another big outburst of tears when um, I went and got in van. I got in van to pick James up. Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, all right, after that, mate, I think I've, I've got it out of my system. Dent is not broke yet. Put him on now. Good on him. Good, good on him. All right, so. How are you feeling, James? Oh, I don't know, really. I'm sunk in. We're just packing the van, but can't believe it, really. Mate, honestly, as soon as I found out, I'm just at, you probably said, I'm just at a barbecue at the moment. And just the, just as we found out, that was it. I was trying to get on the phone to you and everything, mate. We are just all buzzing for you. Yeah, yeah. It's been a good It's been a good couple of weeks. We've put a lot of effort. Nice to be rewarded, really. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you, there's, there's, you can't get a much better reward than gold medal, can you? No, 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 not at all. I'll pass you over to uh, Stephen. Absolutely. There he is. Steve, how are you, mate? How is Toby? Congratulations, mate. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Good, yeah, good. good. Happy. Nice good. to win a medal. Of any sort. Of any sort. They don't get much better than gold, do they, mate? No, no, no. That's the one you're after. Great. Exactly that. Exactly that. Sum up. How's it? How's great, the rest of the team it's been a great, at the moment. It's been a great couple of weeks. We've had a real good time. The fishing's been pretty good, really. Yeah. And it's great for the younger anglers in the team to uh, get a gold medal at Europeans. Yeah, mate, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. And what was is it set in for you yet? European champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it a long time, so it's uh, it's not expected, but it's nice. I think Tobe, Steve's been in team for a long time. This is the first time you've got a European gold, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've got a few silvers and a few bronzes, but this is the first time we've had a gold when I've first been gold. in the team, anyway. And surely, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, because obviously any medal is a great achievement. Yeah. Gold, yeah. surely, yeah. I right. feel that bit's more special. Gold is the one, without a doubt. Yeah, Especially great achievement. Uh, somewhere like this, Portugal. But it's, it's difficult for us here because a few different fish, the fish is different. In Northern Europe, it's a bit easier for us to, to get a medal, but um, down in the, in the south and in the heat, it's always difficult. Tobe, I'm going to pass you on to, I'm going to pass you on to Will, who's got a little bit extra than just the team one as well. I'll put him on now. All right, mate. Hello, Will. How are we, mate? Congratulations. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, thanks, mate. Good. Talk me through yeah. it, mate. How are you feeling? Uh, What's happened? Uh, I'll be honest, mate. It's one of them, you know, you've got to have a little bit of luck. Things have got to go your way. But the dedication and effort that this bunch of lads have shown, not just the last two weeks, but the last month, two months, yeah, practising, preparing, not just tackle, but mentally. You know, there's a lot of people watching. It's a hot environment. You know, it isn't, it's a little bit daunting, if anything, you know. Yeah, um, cool. And these lads, you know, I, I take my hat off to them, mate. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to, to fish with them all, um, spend time with them all and that. And, you know, every now and then in fishing, you get that rub of the green and you get your just rewards, you know, and, and that's exactly what we've got. Um, yeah. Like I say, yeah, we have well, a little well, bit well, of luck, so. which you need to win anything. But... I take my hat off to them, mate. You know, they, they, they've got what they deserved and, and brilliant. Awesome. Yeah, mate. Honestly, awesome. mate, we're all buzzing at home for you. And, and Matt, Matt tells me as well, obviously, you, like you've summed it up brilliantly. You, you'd be nowhere without the team because it's just, it's, it's such a tremendous effort by everybody. And that's all it's about, mate. That's all it's about. Yeah. Sum up how you're feeling because I know that you've obviously had quite a uh, impressive career on the international stage, but European Championship, gold medal, it's never... Um, I mean, it's an amazing achievement, mate. You've got to be buzzing yourself. Yeah, absolutely buzzing. You know, I mean, one of my biggest achievements in match fishing, mate, was when Mark Downs named me as captain of um, captain of this bunch of lads. You know, I, I'm feeling emotional now just thinking about it. <laughs> um, 
like I say, it, it's, it's a pleasure to, to fish with them, to be around them, to talk to them about fishing tactics, about, you know, bait, about everything. Yeah. And you, you, I, I see it a lot in fishing, you know, when good anglers mix with good anglers, there's only one thing that happens and they get better and better and better. And, and yeah. you know, the bunch of youngsters, you know, Cameron, um, Matt, James, you know, Simon Wills, well, he's not fished this weekend, but he's been absolutely instrumental in the prep, in the in the tactics. He's done well all week. Just unfortunate not to fish. Um, yeah. An integral part of the setup um, and, and, and the management, you know, um, with Mark and Darren. Just just the whole group, mate. You know, it. it I don't want to sound. I I I, I don't know. I don't. I, don't know what I want to not want to sound like, but you know, like I say in fishing, every now and then when you put the, the effort in, you get your just rewards, and, and that's yeah. what we've got. Um, yeah, right. you know, to come to Portugal on a specialized sort of venue and beat the Portuguese, it don't happen very often, but there's an intense, you know, home crowd all cheering the Portuguese whenever they catch a fish and you know the heat and the this and the that and a different kind of fishing fish that we don't have in England like bulger and sun perch and and, and, and mullet and yeah you know it, like I say mate I can't praise these lads enough I'm proud no. to be a part of it and, and and good luck to every you know every one of them he's been a great captain this week mate he's a wicked guy isn't he Will oh he's amazing mate this is Cam this Cam's quite interesting this is Cam's fish for England since he was about 13 years old. Cam, how are we, mate? How are you? Can you see me? Yeah, I'm yes, all right. Yeah, yeah, left to bear with us. Right. It's a bit in it. The uh, reception's a bit in and out, but we'll uh, we'll yeah. bear with it, mate. Firstly, for, you know, congratulations, mate. How are you feeling? Yeah, thank you. Very much. Oh, I like that. It's just, it's, you know, my first ever flies everywhere, eh? First ever <laughs> gold medal at International well, Fish Fair. Fished a few now, so yeah, made all. Ever go, mate, mate? Sum it up to me. How, how, really? do, how does it feel? Because you, you, you fished for England, like Matt said, for a long, long time. How does it feel to have a gold medal? And sorry, Cam, how old are you now? If you don't mind me asking. Thirty-two at the minute. But you're still very young into your England career. How does it feel to have a gold medal at such an early stage? Yeah, yeah, it's good. You know, like I say, I've not not had one before, and just made up for it. Really, you know, especially when I've had. I haven't had a tough day. I've had, you know, I've had a nice day, especially it's just been real difficult today and after yesterday. And, you know, yeah. it's could be better, but they haven't. And then when Darren comes running along saying we've won by, you know, a point or so, it's <laughs> made up me. me. You know, my emotions soon change from being distraught, thinking I might have let the team down a little bit to, you know, I've done my done my bit and, you know, it's been good, really. Yeah, so proper made. What, what a roller coaster. What's that like in that moment when he comes down and says, you know, you're on your box, you don't know what's happened. He goes, we've won. What happens? What, what's going on in your head at that moment? You don't know what to think, especially after oh, say, a tough, a tough early day. So, but you don't know what to think straight away. It's been a long time, trying just talking all the time on the phone and to everyone in the team, thinking, you know, trying to sort gear, what do we think, what do we think? And you never quite know, even the stuff that, was talking about before it was coming wasn't some of it weren't really relevant and so on but most of it was you know and yeah the first yeah, boot we got here fishing off we had great days and even though it's good fishing days and there was only one section really where Carasio's paid part well, you know we've had a, a one and a two in that section so you know we've done it it, it worked for us you know coming early and you know it really did help yeah, no, exactly. Well, mate, once again, congratulations. And, you know, enjoy it, because by the sounds of it, you guys have really earned it. I'll find Simon for you if I can. Lovely. Thank you, mate. And, and but I'll see if I can find him. Oh, he's here. I'll pass him on for you. Toby. Simon, how are we? Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, mate. And, you know, congratulations. Yeah, great result. Yeah, you've got venue. to be, yeah, you've got to be buzzing after that, surely. To beat Home Nation by a point on, you know, on their own venues. You know, they don't come much sweeter than that, surely. No, no, it's very close, fine margins over both days. A few hundred grams here, a few hundred grams there, both directions could have changed the result massively. So, yeah, it was good. Different people fish different tactics and uh, and caught on, on all different styles of fishing. So it's very, very good venue. You got any plans for celebration? Well, we're going to the, um, the banquet tonight and then we've got an overnight crossing on the boat. So... Uh, I'm sure we're all right on the boat at worst. We're going to get absolutely on the boat, Toad. 
Allegedly. I was about to say, is there going to be a bar on the boat? There must You'll be. Have be. I've put a beep in there. <laughs> <laughs> there is definitely a bar on the boat. You can have a few extra pints on the boat with Matt as well. Because I've seen him. That boy can put away some beer, so... <laughs> I think most people do care, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, I'll pass you back to Matt. Okay. No, but once again, Simon, congratulations, mate. Right. We're just going to try and find, don't we? Well, big cat is, and uh, Tobes, I can't find um, Mark Downs and Darren, so All I right. reckon you give them a call a bit later. And have yeah, a chat with them. I'll give them a call. Um, yeah, give them a call on the way back. How about that? Perfect, mate. Great to talk to you, yeah. mate. Well, you go and enjoy yourself, mate. Once again, I'm doubly, doubly pleased for you, mate. Congratulations. I know how much effort you put into that. Um, so it's well, well deserved. Right, and I can't wait until you come back. I'm going to have to take you out for a beer. Maybe a couple. Right. 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 I'll, I'll see you later. I'm going. Yeah, I'll see you later, mate. Have fun. Enjoy it. Firstly, congratulations, mate. Obviously, European champions. How does that feel? Yeah, it's been um, it's been um, a long time coming, really, in as much that we've been going through quite a transition period over the last few years with the introduction of the the younger elements of the team, and um, we're really now starting to uh, show the fruits of our labours, and um, I think the future is like pretty sound. Yeah, 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 and um, obviously touching on because is it, am I right in saying is it Matt James and Cameron? Is it their first medal with the uh, senior team? Is that right? It's not. I don't think it's the first medal. It's the first gold um, medal. Is that right? It's the first gold medal. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cameron and Matt and uh, Cameron and Matt are, have had at least two bronzes before that's on it, European yeah. championships, but this is the first uh, first gold medal. And um, you know, it, it was a gold medal really that that uh, was so hard earned. It was made it even more special. Yeah, and what's it like from? your perspective as manager to see this unfold because you spoke about um obviously the team going through some changes you know you're kind of bringing in some younger anglers into the team what's it like to now finally see that materialize well what you've got to realize this has been work in progress for upwards of 15 years wow. um all, all of these youngsters that are now coming through to the senior team um we initially um were selected for the uh the under 16 team hmm. um which i set up well 15 16 years ago with steve sanders um we found funding through the uh the angling trust and the national i think it might have been the national federation of anglers and i'm not sure yeah. and uh, <laughs> we actually instigated the under 16 team and uh, steve controlled that under 16 team all of which these youngsters were part of at the time and uh, slowly as time has progressed there's uh these lads have all been through the under 16s under 20s under 22s under 23s under 25s mm. and then they moved into up to senior level and um you know that their, their their wealth of youth experience at international level is now manifesting itself by great results at, uh, at senior level yeah yeah exactly so it seems to be that when when you know people like matt for example get to that level they've had an abundance of years, you know, at youth level. Infinite, yeah, they've, they've had inf infinitely more international style experience than probably any other young anglers in the country, which is yeah. unfortunate. And and I'd love to try and change that by trying to integrate more international style events here in the UK. I think yeah, it's yeah. about time we had, uh, you know, we had um, a lot of our, our matches run by our federation you know and we are working on this at the moment to run to international rules so we can get a far more young anglers grounded in the skills that are required mm. for international uh, competition and how far if you could put that on a timeline for me mark how far away do you think we are from having say an established international fishing scene but on a domestic circuit if that makes sense I think I think it's 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 coming ever closer. Um, one of the great things with the, the trust at the moment is that is the likes of Jamie. Jamie Cook is very very pro international. Um, I've had a few meetings with Jamie already, and I've I've sort of put forward a few propositions, a few proposals that I think mm -hmm. what we ought to try and achieve over the next few years. And and uh, the good news is it, the, the trust has been very receptive to it. <clears throat> We're already kicking off um, probably this year with the qualification of the feeder. The feeder um, national qualification is now full qualification for the uh, for the world clubs, which mm -hmm. is also going to be fish to fips rules. Um, and then hopefully in subsequent seasons, we'll be bringing the float 
um, championships, fisherships rules again for full qualification for the uh, for the for the World Clubs Float Championships. And once we get that off the running and, and going, we'll start to get more and more anglers appreciative of of the style of fishing that you have to. Uh, that you have to do when you when you travel across Europe, especially to compete against teams that compete only yeah. um, in events with, with FIPS and SIPS rules. Um, Mark, bringing it back to the team, obviously, um, like we just we touched on, you've got a lot of kind of new young anglers um, kind of coming into the team. Um, how important is it? I want to take Will for an example because he got individual bronze at the uh, at the Europeans, didn't he? Which is a fantastic achievement for Will. How important is it to have, say, somebody the more experienced anglers like Will in the team and have them kind of share their experience with the younger guys like Cameron and Matt? Well, the last the last um, since since um, uh, lockdown, I mean, the world has changed, and mm-hmm. um, and 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 we we actually missed the full 18 months and we actually moved back onto the international circuit last September when we went to uh, when we went to Garda, uh, the Mincio River. I took seven, I took uh, three established older anglers and four youngsters um, and we ended up with a really a fantastic bronze medal on a very difficult water against very very good opposition mm. and I think the lads that actually went on that event of uh, you know sort of emphasize a realization of what needs to be done in the pre-preparation um, the groundwork required um, before you even, you know, set off the, the, the tackle development and, and the work on your equipment that you need to process before you go. But more important than that, uh, as William says, um, William is the captain. Yeah, I appointed William as captain uh, last year um, because there always there always needs to be in any in any sporting team there always needs to be a go between between management and. And, and and individual team members. Um, yeah, I've always had a great relationship with all, all of the teams anyway, but having that, having William as a, as a and, and he's not middle-aged by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> um, as, as, as a younger, as a, as a younger, a younger captain that can gel really well with the younger elements of the team, um, that has worked fantastically. I get great feedback from the youngsters. I get great feedback from Will. Uh, this year, Steve um, Hemingway came along, and um, Simon Willsmore, both of which are, and I'll and I'll use I'll use the term loosely, mature anglers, but with massive experience. Yeah. yeah. And um, everybody on this event that we've just came up played a, a massively active role in formulating the plans and the tactics that we we needed. And it is my job really to assess. Um, everything that is found, mm. um, try and put it into some form of of plan, and then, especially on day one, start the plan in motion, and just make sure that we we carry out our, um, our, our our findings throughout day one, and then that then whether it's good or whether it's right or wrong, we then make a, another assessment uh, going into day two. And as it turns out, um, we were very, very close to being spot on on day one. And we didn't have a great deal to change for day two. It's a minor tweak here and there, depending how you start your competition. But the good thing about it, the four methods that we we came up with, mm. um, everybody had an input into those methods. Simon determined the way, the best way of catching the, um, the fish on the, the whip close in, which was, which was really important for two or three of our anglers on, on, on both days. Um, and then, and then uh, Matt and Will determine probably the best way of catching fish over loose feed long at uh, 13 meters. And then you've got Steve, who, who, when we went down the bottom end of match length, which is tight, but slightly different, you had to catch big carasio and, and a few catfish, uh, determine the best way of catching those on the practice we were down there. So, and <coughs> and Dente, who's just like so solid, and and um, and Cameron, they just, just, they just fish their hearts out all week and and the, and the good thing for me is that <clears throat> as manager you don't notice how hard the lads are working yeah because you take it for granted but the feedback we've had from other international captains managers and teams has been phenomenal hmm. um this is a live feed yesterday from the international so from the italian international federation that that sung massive praises to the team about how the youngsters have gelled with the well, with the exterior experienced lads. And not only that, how massively respectful the younger elements and the team were to the opposition. <clears throat> um, you know, which it, it is a sport, win or lose, it's competitive, but at the end of the day, you still have to be respectful for to to all of your fellow competitors. And and we got fabulous feedback from 
well, we look at Facebook and Twitter and all of that. I mean, the feedback has been phenomenal, yeah, uh, driven yeah. by many, 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 many people. And um, I'm just so proud of everything that went on last week. And even and it's made even better by the fact that we did win gold medal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Mark, thank you. Um, you know, thank you for taking the time to speak to me. And once again, congratulations on, thank you, much. you know, a fantastic achievement. And hopefully um, we'll be having a few more talks like these in the years to come because, you know, Perfect. it's exciting and there's no reason why, you know, England can't keep doing it. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. Anyway, mate, Toby, that's really appreciated. Yeah, Take no, care, thanks mate. again, Mark. And you, mate. Well, gents, we are back and we're back with some massive news. Congratulations to you both European champions. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I didn't doubt it for a second. Of course I didn't. How does it feel? Firstly, Matt? Um, to be honest, mate, like I got all the emotion out the second I knew that we'd won. Um, Downsy come down and he'd got tears running down his face and he walked down the steps um to like the beach bit and I thought, We've beat him. We've won like and like he just he didn't tell I'm like, have we won, have we won, have we won? And he just walked down the steps and his arms got wider. As he came down the steps, and I just ran up to him, hugged him, and that was me gone. Brilliant. Um, so I got it. I got all the emotion out of my system then, um, and just been buzzing ever since. To be fair. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, James? What were you like in the in the moment that you first found out that you you know European champions? So I was I was more in the middle of the match length, and the, all the management and people at either end. So I was sat in my box thinking, all my gear was packed away, and I was thinking, I'm. Have we won? I don't really know. And I could see some Portuguese people down here cheering. And I was like, I hope that's an individual. Someone won individual. <laughs> and, um, so then I was a bit unknown. And one Simon run past and he said, I think we've won, but I'm not sure. And I was like, oh, in my, in my body, I'm like, come on, come on, please. Because that's obviously what we wanted. And then I walked to the top of the bank and I could see Will hugging Mark. And I thought we must have won. So I set off running down to him. <laughs> and I, don't do, I don't normally do that much running. <laughs> and um, him and Cameron were stood at the back of my van and uh, Cameron put his drinks down and I run up and give him a massive hug and obviously that was that. But that was when I found out. So I didn't actually find out while I was sat fishing, uh, sat in my box. Yeah, yeah. What a mad moment because it's not like football, is it? There's no final whistle and you know, oh, it's 3-0 or whatever, we've won and this and that. How long is it between the periods of, say, all out and then the news finally kind of breaks to you guys because that must be a horrendous way. Um, it's it's sort of it's sort of known because you have bank runners, Tobe. So like people on the bank will constantly be adding up the points that you're on. Right. Like, okay. Is, so for example, is James beating his Portuguese man? Yeah. How much by? Probably two places. So right, we've got two points on them there. So the management on the bank and the bank runners are constantly trying to manage it. Yeah. And obviously, as soon as the sections are weighed in, each section, one of the bank runners will be there and he'll be like, right, James is fourth, Portuguese is sixth. So we've got three points on him there. And and you sort of add up the points yourself right. as a team as you're doing it. So you've got a rough idea, but it's still not concrete, is no. it? No. It's not... Not when there's one point in it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, so, no. it's, oh, it's one point. so it really went down to the wire. Hmm one point and even to the point where we were sat having a drink after all thinking we'd won we didn't actually know because it wasn't official mm. but we'd all worked it out and the management had worked it out that we had won by one point but you, did, you don't actually know until <laughs> no. Phipps put it on the imagine if it had gone the other way that was it it was taken off you imagine how horrendous that would have been we wouldn't be sat here would we no we definitely wouldn't <laughs> well, <in> fact, <laughs> I meant to say you know when Denty were running down the bank yes um, it was quite funny me and Cam Cameron were there and he got two beers in his hand that he got from this cafe and I couldn't see James running down behind yeah because um, I were facing Cameron and Cameron's obviously looking up the road and he can see Denty running and Cameron went Matt, I'm going to have to stop you because I've never had a bear running at me before. I'm going to put, <laughs> I'm going to put these beers down. <laughs> and then he put the beers down. And that was it. Yeah. What a moment. What a moment. And obviously, for, for you guys, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is your first gold medal for the senior squad, isn't it? Mm. I know, that, Matt, you've had some success on the, um, is it the under-25 circuit? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. both won a gold with Barnsley yeah. in the World Club Champs of course, as well. Yeah, yeah. But this is your first international gold medal for the senior squad. How is that... Because that's just a tremendous achievement. How it, how does that kind of differ from from the other kind of medals that you've won, Matt? I'll start with you. Um, for me, Matt, it, it sounds cheesy as out, but you do dream about it. You do think about it a lot. And I've said it in podcasts before, and other people who've been on them, Steve Ringer, um, Will Rays, and you know, you, we've heard it on a lot of the Fishing Gurus podcasts. Like there is no better feeling than being up there as a team, national anthem playing, arms around each other. 
flag going up in the middle of them three poles and it's the England one. Like, there's no better feeling. And obviously, we, we've done it. We, we've have won nationals. James has won nationals. Um, won Census Challenge. Has won loads of good stuff as a team. Mm. But a, a Phipps Ed European Championship or World Championship... We've got medals in them. We've got gold. We've got silvers. We've got bronzes. But to be to be stood on the second podium when there's a team cheering, we're gold medal around the neck. Yeah, yeah. You think you constantly think I want to be there. Yeah. I want to be stood there. So for this to be the first time when you stood in the middle and you've got a gold one, like it, it were really really special, mate. Like yeah, that, that's yeah. the only way I can describe it. It's something like. So after so so much and really wanted to experience it and do it. Yeah, yeah. But I know how damn hard it is to to actually get there. Yeah. And we've finally done it. So loads of relief and absolutely buzzing. Yeah. And James, what about you? Because I when I spoke to to Will on the Sunday after you guys had won, he did nothing but kind words and admiration for the entire team because you guys have been prepping the. I mean, how long does the preparation go for this? What, months? Yeah. Months on end? It's at home. It's the money that you put in and everything that kind of comes with it. So what was it like for you when you finally got that kind of first senior gold medal for England? Yeah, so obviously we, everything stops sort of and we just prep and prep for like probably going on for more than a month before and before we get there. Bear in mind, we're out there for two weeks. So yeah, yeah. it's probably six, eight weeks, the full thing. But obviously... You've seen us in the, in my tackle room, Matt in his garage, everyone doing the prep and so much hard work and effort goes into it. And even when we've been in that situation before and we've come second, third, it's still a great achievement. But to be that person, that team... To be that close, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be that absolutely. close is so annoying because you know how much effort goes in. Yeah, yeah. To actually finally be the team on the middle podium and in first position... Right, it's a dream come true for me. Matt, Matt summed it up brilliantly, what yeah, he said yeah, about yeah. everything. I think it's important to highlight as well that, you know, you guys have full-time jobs. You're not just anglers, are you? Matt, you're one of the busiest people I know. James, you've got a little in as well. So you guys are, are balancing, you know, this commitment to the England team along with regularly, you know, normal lives. I imagine you've got to get home, put little into bed and this and that. Matt, you work every hour under the sun. And... All the while, you're still doing all this prep and stuff like that. So the work that goes into it, you know, Will summed it up perfectly. It's just unbelievable. So then to come away with that, I mean, you know. That's... It sort of justifies the sacrifice that you put in at home. Yeah, and when yeah. you come home and you say you've got your gold medal <laughs> and everyone's happy, they're like, oh, that's why you yeah, put yeah, so yeah, much perfect. effort in going into it. One thing I do want to know, do the um, the missus, uh, oh, Matt, I'll start with you. Meg, does she, when you come home with some European champion gold medal, What's her initial reaction? Um, <laughs> like, super pleased. I know it sounds weird, though. Like, I don't know. I hope she don't listen to this. But um, <laughs> I don't think... Like, my missus is a different person to me. Like, she ain't, she doesn't have a fishing and a, and a commitment like that. And I just try and understand that. And, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I can tell she's so, so pleased for me. Yeah. But I don't know if... I don't know if anyone... Deep down, if I'm brutally honest, which I'm going to be, yeah, absolutely. I don't really know how much people who don't do this kind of thing know how hard it is and know what it feels like. Yeah, yeah. That's me being honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's nothing wrong with that. But at the no. end of the day, um, you've still got three lines on your chest. You're still representing the country. Mm. It doesn't matter how many people know. You, you, you know, it still yeah, doesn't yeah. take away from it. What about you, James? Is your missus, is she... She got a barbecue street party set up for your return. <laughs> no, just a little one still there, but um, yeah, yeah. she is, is it exactly the same, really. She Susie does compete with horses, so she has got that competitive oh, okay. atmosphere, like within the family. Yeah, yeah. But I know what Matt's saying it's she does put a lot of effort and stuff into the horses, so it's she sort of realizes how much you got to put in and what you get back out. But yeah, I don't, she's really pleased for me, but it's. I yeah, don't really yeah. know, to be honest. She doesn't... Um, she loves that everyone doing well. Yeah, yeah, of course. And she has been out before and watched, to be fair. 
God, that's um, not bad, is it? If your missus come out and watch you fishing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, you've done well there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, we come second that time, so she said she would never come back in. <laughs> Showing her up. Do you know, you know, Dent is quite blunt, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Great. I love it. Obviously, I've just had like two and a half weeks in a van with yeah, him. So yeah, I, yeah. we have all, he, he's in on my conversations with Meg and I'm in on his conversations with his missus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't always think they realise this. <laughs> um, but, but Susie is so cool like when she talks on phone because you know, like, if you ring James, he's like, now then, what do you want? Like, yeah. Bear in mind, we'll be like two a week and a half into the trip. But I've come to love that about you because yeah. I just think it's just a brilliant but attitude. James will ring Susie and Susie's like, hello. <laughs> he's like, all right, morning, everything all right? And she's like, yeah. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> like she's oh, so, so she one ups you. She's oh, so yeah, yeah. cool. I love her, mate. <laughs> Both very similar in yeah, that you sort are. of way. That's it's good. Great. That. that is good. We sort uh, of don't get into each other's way, to be honest. Obviously, she wants to do her RC thing. I do my fishing thing. We're perfect happy, setup. For, happy for each other to do well, and that's it. Perfect setup, lads. I'm keen to get into the um, into the fishing, and I've got Bobby here as well to help me with the more um, technical side of things. Go on, then, Bob. <laughs> Hello. Just enjoying the show at the moment. It's brilliant. <laughs> He's much better looking than me. We should have had him this side of the right. camera. We weren't going to say Oaktail, but yeah, he is. Setting up the cameras before him. <laughs> it's far too exciting. <laughs> um, lads, I want to start at... Um, we'll get through it as quick as we can, if you like, because I know there's a lot of fishing to cover. But I want to start... Um, because you went out for what was called an unofficial practice, didn't you? Which was the week before, is that right? Mm. Yep. So talk me through the beginning of that. Where did you start on the bank? And what were your kind of opening tactics? Did you kind of spread them out the team? Did you all try the same thing? How did how did that begin? Um, I'll talk about this bit if you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so the unofficial practice, in, in a FIPS at a European Champs or a World Champs, you can't fish on the match level um, for a couple of weeks before the official week. Um, but you can fish up to 250 metres away. It might be 500 metres, I can't remember. But you can fish the same river, but further upstream, downstream, wherever. So if there's an opportunity to do it, it can be advantageous because you're not far from the match length. It is the same body of water at the end of the day. And it gives you a good idea of like what species are in there, what are the conditions like, mm. what's the river flow like? Does it get faster on a certain day, slower on a certain day? A lot of them are hydro-powered out there, so at weekends... They slow down because all the industry shuts. Yeah, of course. So there's loads of factors that these European style venues um, have mm. that it's important to learn about, and they're the them sort of things: depth, species of fish, conditions, um, are sort of the three main things that we look to establish when we're doing this unofficial practicing. And aside from that, especially in places like Portugal. I think it's really important to be out there and be acclimatising to it. When we pulled up in Portugal, you probably saw some... I've got some films of us getting yeah, off the... Was it 38 degrees? 40. It got to 40. I don't know if your thermometer in your van yeah. goes above that. I'm but not it, sure. it got <laughs> it to... maxed out yeah, at 40. <laughs> a couple of times it got to 40, right? Yeah. And I'm speaking on behalf of all the gingers in the world here. Ain't good for us, <laughs> no, that. Not one. We <laughs> need not some good special sun cream, didn't yeah. we? Didn't we? <laughs> they were nearly like a little guru cap, sunglasses, and a pile of mat mush on the floor. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. But um, but uh, it sounds very particular. But if you're going to sit in forty degree for six or eight hours a day for two weeks, like for a full practice week, being there a week early and getting used to it really, really helps. Yeah, yeah. And we 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 briefly spoke about this when we when I caught up with you guys on the practice week. Mm. You've seriously got to, aside from assessing the fishing conditions and stuff like that, you've seriously got to keep an eye on things like hydration, sunstroke, sunburn. You know, because that's mm. all things that you more than most, to be honest. But it's not something, James, I imagine it's not something that you kind of is at the forefront of your thinking when you're perhaps fishing domestically. Uh, no, no, you need, you do need to keep hydrated, obviously, in the UK. But a lot of the time when it is hot and you're concentrating, even not wearing sunglasses, stuff like that, squinting because it's so bright and so much brighter than everywhere else. Yeah, of course. Um, you just need to keep on top of it. But the better the fishing is, the less you drink, I always think, because yeah. all you want to do... So you're bagging up, that's it. All you want to do is get back in and get another one. But yeah, it is, it is quite a hard um, thing to keep on top of. He's yeah. always like, you need to drink more water. I'm like, yes, Dad. <laughs> and then, so coming back to it, because I remember um, talking to you and, and we had a nice chat and we, I watched you do some fishing and it looked very kind of... I likened it to like the Amazon. It looked very jungle-esque kind of where you were. Um how did that kind of 
prep you when you were kind of coming to the end of unofficial practice into practice week because what what interested me as a novice angler if, if you like is i didn't understand how you could gay get any practice fishing kind of one place and then i know it was closed but moving somewhere else and it could be totally different mm. so how was that what you learned in the unofficial kind of practice how was that applicable to say the official practice week yeah it probably wasn't the best venue for the unofficial practice week, if I'm right. honest. Just purely, well, on the first day we got there, we'd done about 150 miles trying to find <laughs> suitable places. It's no 150 miles trying to find suitable places that we could fish. Yeah. There's just a lot of the rivers been taken over by the weed that you could yes, see. Yes, that was it. Yeah, so yeah. it really limited us for where to go. Um, but obviously we had to use that time wisely. So we spent a couple of days on the place where you, where we've done a bit of filming. You could see all the weed. Mm. Then we spent a day on another venue, just fishing for bleak and setting our other kit up, um, which would have been similar to fishing for bleak on the actual venue. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. then we went to another place, all on the same river, but just upstream or yeah. downstream, mm. um, and fished a slide, a uh, waggler, sorry. Yes. Um, just practicing our casting and stuff like that. So... All these little things, although you might not be right near the match length, mm. just getting used to doing it, casting the distance, sinking your line, just getting into the routine of it all massively helps when you get on the match length. Just, yeah, a, yeah. just a quick question for me, boys. Just um, just because I know how important, com how much, how important confidence is fishing over here. Is it the same over there? You're both really experienced international anglers and in this country, obviously. How much? How much importance do you put on confidence, catching some fish, getting used to the conditions, getting used to everything? Great question. For me, for me, mate, it's everything. Like, I always try and think, like, if I can practice every single thing that I can influence before we sit down. So, so Everything in your control. Yeah, everything that I can yeah. potentially yeah. have my finger on the pulse on, yeah. I, want it, I want it on it as much as it can be. Not by the end of the practice week, but when I sit down on the Monday at the start of the practice week. So I practice 100% capacity. Oh, yeah. So I don't want to sit down on that practice week, punch an 18 gram waggler 60 meters into a river thinking, is this shock leader going to be all right? Yes. Is my, mm. do we need fluorocarbon below this line or do we, or do we need line below? Do we... Are these swivels working properly? Like, I don't want to be Tuesday biting my rod off thinking... Oh, 20 is not right below That's not me. not right, yeah. Like, like, I sit down, I sat down on that Monday and thought, all I wanted to be thinking is, are the, what, how do I catch these yeah. barbels then? You want to be thinking how about much fishing. I'm, how much am I feeding? Yeah. Where am I fishing? Yeah. Like, like and, and no other factors that I can't, I've already practiced or already thought about should be in my head. And that's how I like to prepare for this kind of thing. And that's why going for a day off the limb fishing a waggler yeah. Doing it t a dozen times at home before we went. Going bleak fishing, which we can't do in England because all the rivers were shut before we can. Yeah, Having a course. full day there. And I know it sounds crazy, but on that full day bleak fishing, it's not just me sat there bleak fishing on my own. Mm. I've got Will Raisin, who's been doing it for 40 years. Yeah, I've got yeah, Simon Willsmore, yeah. one of the best small fish yeah. anglers on the planet. I've got Denty stood on my shoulder going, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? What do you think about this? Yeah, so it's so Cameron, yeah, yeah. Um, Steve Emingray, who's been in England team for 20, like this, there's not just one mind, but there's five throwing stuff at you. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and in that environment, you just thrive yeah, and yeah. learn so much more and so much quicker than you can sat at home on your own. So for me, the benefit of going practicing out there early with that group of people mm. just invigorates me with yes yeah yeah, so yeah yeah it's interesting that you said that because when i spoke to mark he um he spoke about the importance of building a balanced team in a sense of he can he can come into criticism for why isn't so and so on the team or why isn't so and so on the team and he very kindly compared it to football for me he said when you when you build a, a football team mm. you need good defenders great midfielders and then brilliant attackers as well and he, he said it's the exact same in fishing and you've just kind of backed up what he said there with the fact you've got so many brilliant minds that are all brilliant at slightly different kind of disciplines of fishing if you like so when it comes down to is that would you say the most important part of that practice then kind of sponging off everybody's kind of um, information. Yeah, to, to sum up, mate, that the whole of the time we're there, 
practice week, unofficial week, preparation period, and this period afterwards, yeah, working as a team is number one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. A bit like when we talked about that World Championships you went on last year, Matt. Very similar this time. You're fishing for a lot of fish we don't even have in this country. Mm. Um, was yeah, that's the, what I mean. The, the barbel are completely different, aren't they? And mm. yeah. Some perch, they're, yeah. they're wicked. When you keep showing me them, they're <laughs> wicked fish. It'd be good then. if they grew to like eight pounds. They'd be it? good, wouldn't they? would be round ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Marine, That'd be a they? mega fish. That'd though, be wouldn't proper it? good. Um, James, I want to come to you next. So moving straight into um, into practice week, obviously. Am I right in saying you're now on the match length? Is that right? From the yeah. Monday, From yeah. From the Monday, yeah, yeah. So, um, James, taking what you've learned from the unofficial practice week, how did you approach um, first official practice day? First official practice day, we saw, we went off a little bit what we learned just off the match length where we could fish, and then going off like what note Will had made prior to when he'd went and stuff like that. So we, we all sort of done similar thing on the first day because mm. you've got to really just to get a feel for what's actually going to happen um and then after that then we started concocting a bit of a plan what we're going to do this i done this and whatever but it was it was difficult wasn't it on the first few mm. days notoriously this venue mm. gets better and better as the week goes on so the first day practice is normally quite tough so you don't really learn that much, right? Okay. That's so it's a hard, it's a hard one to come to any conclusions after a, a one day of fishing. Yeah. Even yeah. any conclusion of any rig or line or whatever you're going to use. Yeah. You need to do probably it probably took till the Thursday I'd say mm. for us to have any sort of plan down one route to what we were actually going to do. Yeah, and. Bringing it back to what Bobby said about confidence, what does that do to your confidence um, as individuals and as a team, but kind of getting through practice week and kind of, it, you know, like you said, it's a bit of a slow burner. What does that do to your confidence, James? It don't, does it affect you at all or are you, you know? It's not, I wouldn't say it's great not catching loads of fish, but you are learning every day. Okay. Um, but you just you just need to keep going through the motions. There's a lot of places we go where it is like that, so you sort of used to it. Mm. It's not like Crash Bang Wallop, although it was a bit like that in Hungary. But um, in general, you just got a slow burn. Keep going through all your options, having a look at what other people done. There were low weights in the first four days. Well, say that the fourth day of practice, mm. we were at the bottom end of the match length, where it was really good. And where all the fish obviously hang out near the dam. Right, okay. And we all caught great weights that day. And that was probably a one-off, I'd say. Mm. It was it, like a little treat. Like a, <laughs> the Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday had been crap. And then we drew this end box and we had like, it were like, they were like the whole atmosphere had gone, come on, lads, you've worked hard. Have an ice cream. Yeah, And they put yeah, us in yeah. this end box nice. with all these fish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Matt, what about you then? Somebody that likes to be... In complete control of their fishing um but also a lot of kind of international experience how does um a slow kind of burning practice week how does that affect you mentally well, in- I, were, I were going to ask james like i don't know about you but i felt like got to the wednesday and we could have easily gone down the wrong route couldn't we, we could have easily easily gone down the wrong route and M- mark was wanting us to do one thing and we were all not wanting to do it basically mm. and there was a bit of who had you know like what should we do and it was a, i don't know it could have easily went down the wrong route yeah, yeah and it's that but that's what practice is all about so then the next day on the thursday we couldn't really practice properly because we were in the great box it was nothing like the rest of the match length yeah so yeah. we sort of had to take that day as just a, a one-off great practice for the people who were going to draw down that end mm. but not not a practice for the whole match length but we did on the friday i thought was the biggest learning day mm. and generally it is on all of them yeah yeah and to, why, why is that well to like tell you to, to like sort of put into perspective what tactics came into play throughout the practice week total dog poo on the monday and tuesday yeah. rock hard don't think any of us broke a kilo oh wow and so we literally caught an odd fish on a bit of everything Odd fish on a pole, yeah, yeah. odd fish on a slide, odd fish on a waggler. And by the Wednesday, we've we've had three days of really tough fishing. And the only dominant fish we could catch are these small catfish. And Mark Downs, manager, being on the bank, he's I can see what he's thinking. Mm. He's thinking, 
these are the main fish. All the teams are catching these little catfish. We need to learn how to catch these the best we can, which was brilliant and probably won it for us because mm. that night mm. he said, I don't care what any of you think, we need to try feeding some ground bait on a slider. All of us wanted to feed Sticky Mag because we knew that was the way to catch barbel. Mark, all eyes on the bank, was going, great, barbel are amazing. I'm walking this 60-peg match yeah, yeah. and I ain't seeing any caught, but I'm seeing loads of catfish. So, as manager, I'm telling you yeah. to feed some ground bait in a bit more brutal words than that, if I'm yeah, honest, yeah, yeah, and yeah. a few <laughs> fish bangs on a table. Yeah. Um, but what great managing. Brilliant yeah, managing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Amazing, we, we, we had one particular meeting yeah. and it's not in any way negative or bad, but Mark putting his foot down and telling us how important it was to feed some ground bait on yeah, a yeah. slider all set a slider up and not just these fixed wagglers for barbel because yeah, you yeah. can get a slider down faster it's better presentation you can catch catfish faster on it yeah yeah like his eyes and experience on the bank and him then pushing that onto the team mm. really really helped yeah, yeah massively like i'd say on the first day of the match them sort of tactics that he drilled into us on that wednesday what we really weren't going down that route. Not, probably, we didn't want to do it at all, did Probably we? got you where you came because you on caught the first day, yeah. 80 catfish on a slider. How big are these catfish, Matt, on average, gram-wise? Because you're fishing for what? I think I spoke to you the other day and you said five kilos, six kilos you were fishing for for good points. Mm. So how big was a catfish on average, would you um, say? Didn't we work probably out? Probably about four, three or four ounce, weren't they? Yeah. So, L- so little so chunky catfish. A couple of hundred grams? <laughs> a gram, hundred grams. About a hundred, hundred grams. Oh, hundred grams. Yeah. Yeah. See, I always thought catfish were like, 80, 90 no, kilos these, or these, something. These about the size of your index. <laughs> <laughs> James pulling out big monsters out of the room. <laughs> um, but then, then obviously, so so we've got this, we've got this waggler for barbel, right? Will's catching an odd big barbel on waggler. Game yeah. changing. Sorry, how, fish. how how big's a up big barbel? Up to a kilo. Up to oh, a okay. kilo. Yeah, Bear in mind, size, but... first two days, no one caught a kilo, and all of a sudden, these fish start appearing there. Kilo, kilo barbel each. game changers yeah, yeah. get one Mega of them in your net then. you go from a 10th in your section to first like yeah, yeah. in one fish that's yeah. ridiculous so we've got it? this waggler best way to catch them waggler sticky mag on a waggler fixed waggler falling through the water slowly mm. building this little picture of how to catch that particular species then we've got mark downs manager lads barbel great but you need to learn this you need got to feed ground bait yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, and he watched the teams feed around us and the ones that fed ground bait sucked the catfish. So we weren't catching cats and the ones that fed ground bait were. Yeah. And he's spotting this and, and feeding it back to us. So all of a sudden, we've got this waggler for barbel. Now we've got this slider for catfish. Yeah. So like that's two of the species ticked off. And on the Wednesday afternoon, we all had a little run of bites on a long pole, didn't we? It was a glimmer of hope, A little wasn't glimmer yeah. of like this long pole. And I caught a few little barbel. And Steve Emming Gray got broke, and then in the afternoon we all stayed on after, yeah, because you can stay on until six pm if you want, um, in the uno- in in the official practice. All right. And that Wednesday we all stayed on and hooked a few on a long pole, didn't we? Mm. So like that then gave us a brilliant grounding for the Friday's practice to have a really good. And tell you what else happened, yeah, Simon, yeah, yeah. Willsmore, also that Wednesday had a little runner catching some bleak on a short pole and he threw that into the mix so all of a sudden we've gone from this monday with this venue that's barren and there's hardly any fish and the fish that we don't know how to catch to like will suss this know how to catch a barbel on a waggler downs it lads catfish important this is what you need to do for him yeah glimmer of hope on a long pole that could get better I had a little run of bikes on that. So did a few others after the match. Simon, don't forget, lads, there's some bleak short. Yeah. Then the Thursday, we went to this bottom end, caught a load of fish, which is not applicable to the other four sections. But surely great for your kind of mental confidence. Is it? Uh, Yes and no. Right, Because also made you think, well, all the fish are down there. It's not great up there. It throws you off track a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But... Some one of one of the five of us was going to be down there, so we needed to go and practice there anyway. Yeah, which was great to be down there. But then the Friday we got all this stuff to put in the mix, and we just practiced. That Friday's practice was so good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was so good, really so good. You've gone that 
see again that fascinates me that you've gone from over the course of a week to a monday kind of it's looking a bit hopeless even tuesday slow burning and then suddenly you pick up one tactics two three four and come friday you've got what it sounds like to me the entire venue more or less sussed on multiple kind of tactics i'd say the friday though we sussed even more didn't we yeah and even on that wednesday the afternoon we worked out a tactic. There was a few mullet that afternoon, wasn't mm, there? Mm. And we worked out a tactic how to catch the mullet. Yeah. And we had that up our sleeve as well. Do you know, if on the match day, mm. we all had our bit of bait for that and we all knew what to do. So if on the match day, it was a bit overcast and there was a few mullet getting hooked, we knew what to feed, we knew what to put on the hook and we knew how to catch them. Mm. And that, and not, although it didn't come into play, yeah, that could have easily swayed a, a win to a no podium. Mm. See, I, I love it because I, I mean, I'm in such a position, right, where this totally fascinates me. Because if I go fishing and I catch one fish in a morning, I just think, oh, that's blind luck. But listening to you guys and the way that you prep a venue and go fishing, it's like everything that you catch is totally calculated and it's like all totally prepared. So it's almost every sport has an element of luck, but it, it's all very much kind of put in place, isn't it? Which I just, mm. it, it blows my mind. It doesn't get enough recognition that I don't think. I think so. Lee Kerry, obviously our Barnes, the captain, he drills into us, doesn't he, the importance of learning how to catch every species in a venue. Mm. We spoke to him one morning, didn't we, mm. driving to the venue? And we we speak, we spoke to him most days. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was like, the most important thing, learn how to catch every fish on the venue. Yeah. And then obviously yeah. choose where you're going to go after that. So how many species were on this venue, do you know? What we are? We've got barbel, little carp, grassios. Bleak. Borger, bleak, um, mullet, some perch, bleak. Yeah, you've got bleak. Probably like eight or nine species. Yeah, yeah. And you'd have ticked off by the sounds of it, what, five, six at least? The, all the main ones, yeah. All yeah, yeah, all the ones that are going to help mm. you win. Mm. Mental. Let's get into, because um, again, I want to stick with what Bobby said, kind of uh, your, your mental state, because I think that's really important, especially in high level sport. When What was the team's. Um, confidence and morale where were you guys at friday night because obviously saturday is the first official day of the european championships what was going on friday night for you james first friday night have you got nerves or anything like that uh i don't get i don't get nervous on the night before i've got that feeling you know yeah, like yeah. obviously you want to do I imagine well james just been so laid back like asleep by eight o'clock no problems at all <laughs> can't go to sleep with him there have you been no. in share room with him he's too hyper i have yes <laughs> <laughs> i was like we're we gonna obviously you don't get chance to go to sleep early. It's just, even though you, you've been prepping all week and you top your hooks up and you do some rigs and whatever, even on that last night, you're still up till 10 o'clock. Yeah, like yeah. I did, I tied my hooks at my bedside table where we were staying. And like, I'd literally tie hooks till I felt tired and then I'd put my hooks down and go to sleep. But you just, that's what we were doing on the night. I didn't feel nervous and we'd had a good meeting and we'd obviously had a brilliant last day of practice. Yeah. The team had practiced well. So the the morale, I'd say, was really high. Everyone was confident. Good. I'd, I would have said so mm. on the last day. Is Mark not coming around, knocking on everyone's doors, making sure it's lights out by 11? Um, Not really. He's, he's, he's not like we that, know, is he? like We know, as a team, you can tell that. Like, I know it sounds crazy and it yeah, sounds a little yeah. bit dull and boring, but... Every single one of us just wants to go to bed as early as possible on that week yeah, because course. you're absolutely shattered. You're up at half five every morning. You've been in the sun like, all day. You, you, yeah. You're absolutely knackered, mate. Yeah. And and you can tell all you want to do is get back, have some food, do as much of your kit as you possibly can so you're as ready as possible and go to sleep. For, for the average angler, Toby, it's, it's hard to... Um like fathom how prepared these guys are like i'm i was lucky i got to fish for them in hungary a bit and yeah, yeah any spare second if matt thinks a certain hook's better than another hook he's tying 20 of those hooks in the cab of his van or in his peg yeah, or next is. to his bed same as james and they are just on it all the time 24 7 if yeah. they're awake they're thinking about the fishing and if there's and if they're not thinking about the fishing, they are probably are fishing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's what yeah. i love about yeah. doing these films because um when I spoke to the guys when they were kind of prepping for the Euros and stuff like that, they both have like yeah. fishing rooms full of more kit that than I've incredible. seen in most tackle shops. Yeah. And it's tidier and more organized than most rooms in my house. Mm. And that's like, 
yeah it is phenomenal yeah they're have yeah. you got a room like that <laughs> I, I wish though <laughs> yeah, do you know what i mean it's like yeah. he's got a sex dungeon now. <laughs> <laughs> i told you not to mention <laughs> we'll cut that bit <laughs> <laughs> so getting into the match then saturday morning this is where we're at now what's um talk me through it you're kind of coming down to your pegs matt i want to come to you match start talk me through it what happened saturday morning um, I drew peg C6 on the first day, which was just to the right, left. I always still have to do this, like where I hold my hand up <laughs> for left and right. Ain't it weird, that? Just to the left of where we'd practised on the Friday. What I will say, just I don't want to go back too much, but onto that Friday, Will was such a massive influence on that Friday with perfecting the pole. Like we had all them other methods in and the pole, we had that glimmer of it being good on the Wednesday and on the Friday, Will caught nearly five kilo on it lost a few big fish on it and he came back on that friday mm. absolutely buzzing that he knew what to do we'd all caught a few fish on it so like he, him doing well on it and telling us what to do and us all practicing it well that last bit of friday just gave us all so much confidence on that friday night yeah, yeah. the difference between the confidence levels on the wednesday night and the friday night complete polar opposites mm. um so that get on the on the morning of the match, I, I were confident. I was in an area where I knew that there were going to be some fish. Um, I had all these methods. Uh, the, the way that I sort of look at it, if if you've practiced properly, you ain't got anything to fear. Like mm. they're in they're in a fear. It's, it's, it's excitement. You're that prepared. That yeah. There is no... Like again, it's about taking all the possibilities and removing anything that could potentially be negative by practicing well and preparing well and mm. if it doesn't go to plan i don't really feel like you can give it any more yeah do you yeah. know what i mean that's what i think that's really important what you just said there because what i think fishing gets a we all know that fishing gets a reputation of um I don't know, a bit of a hobby, not really a sport sometimes. I'm talking from more people kind of outside the sport. But what you've just said there reminded me of, uh, remember when we had Dean on the podcast mm. and he was talking about his preparation for Commonwealth Games yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. It's very similar to what you've just said. That yeah. When you're at such a high level in sport, it's like you said, James, there's almost no nerves. You're almost just ready because you just, you, you've prepped to the mm. point where there are no other possible, you're, you're aware. It's just got to happen. You're aware of everything that's going to, could happen mm. if you like. Mm. So there's no, is, is that the same for you, James? Is that why you, there were no nerves? Were you just totally confident in everything that you have prepared? Yeah, I was confident. And like, obviously what we said about every, there's no stone unturned really, yeah. that we we're all ready to go. Um, it's just, and it's on the match day of, obviously executing what we want to do but obviously we all know that fishing isn't quite as easy as just sticking to a plan well it's the and, only sport that has external factors mm, that you can't control yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah um but in general no i didn't i didn't feel nervous I, I, the worst thing for me is i just don't want to let the team down mm, that's yeah. that's what i don't want to do yeah 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 because um, yeah because it speaking to mark again it is it's it's such an what from the sounds of it and even speaking to a few of the guys you've got such an incredible team there there's no from where i'm sitting there's no there's no ego there's no this or or anything it's all about the team performance and stuff like that which mark says you know mark puts that all down to the team success i think that's really mm. it's, it's nice to see and, and i think it's going to do you guys a lot of good in in, in the long run mm. um but james talk me through your saturday then so you kind of you got there you're at your peg match starts what's going on for you um, Saturday, I drew A3, so I was quite close to the bridge. Um, there was talk of a few Carasios potentially. Um, it was a bit weedy where I was, so that was another factor. So you were prepped from practice week then? <laughs> sort of, yeah, but obviously in, in a match like that, you don't really want to get to your peg and have like some weed coming up, because if you do up something decent, is it going to snag you? Are you going <laughs> to lose it? And you doing, are you doing the gardening before you get You, you get are allowed there? to, but in my peg the weed was like eight meters out so I, I and it was that much you can't really do anything i had a little channel through so, the middle so what did you do did you just kind of leave it or i left the weed that was further out unless i was going in there was no way i was getting all that out <laughs> you imagine the morning of the european champs i've got this image of matt prepping <laughs> and he looks around and james has just gone for a swim <laughs> but obviously we're, we're all up early our baits ready it's all in our measures 
everything's yeah, yeah, done, yeah. that sort of thing. So I'm confident that that's behind me. I'm, I can forget about yeah, that. It's out of my it. mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I can just set me kit up. Bear in mind that we set up whips, four or five rods, seven or eight top kits, all these rigs and stuff. So you, I personally, I get it all out on me, Bruce and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then I make sure all my baits sorted. I'm sat there, bait check's done. And then I start and plumb up and have a read in my peg, know what I want to do and stuff like that. And that takes, it takes quite a while, but you, you've you only got an hour and 50 minutes. Although it does sound quite a while. No, it flies by. In that situation yeah, when does. you're setting six rods up and all them top kits and stuff. It, I bet you it, finish and you've got like 10 minutes left. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, do, it does really fly, but... And then obviously we've, we've all plumbed up and it was sound and there was no word on the bank that anything was wrong with anything or out like that and everyone was happy and you just sat there waiting confident that the team's going to do well and hopefully everyone pulls off a good performance. No, brilliant. And so let's get let's get into the day kind of through. Were, were there any... What went well for you on that first day, mate? What, were um, there any... I, I had a great first day, mate. Absolutely. Uh, uh, not far off what I couldn't my match couldn't have gone that much better mm. um, interestingly I had Portuguese one side local team okay. set to win and I had Hungary the other side really strong team you don't really want to be anywhere near them so I were in a bit of a dangerous sandwich to be honest yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, started on um, a little whip for a few quick fish never got a bite chucked it up the bank chucked my waggler out caught a couple of little barbel on the waggler Again, coming back to what Will perfected in the week and yeah, we tweaked yeah. as a team. Um, no more barbel. So then I moved on to a slider, the catfish. I had a little run of catfish and it sort of took me to like 45 minutes into the match. Word came down, it's fishing odd. Now the Portuguese lad to me left at this 45 minute point, he started catching an odd big barbel on Waggler. They know what to do on this Waggler. That was always going to be the dangerous thing for all the teams to beat Portugal in Portugal's massive yeah, and they're yeah. such a lethal team they fish these wagglers they know how to feed it they know what gear to use they know how to catch these weird barbel that are different to barbel we have in the UK yeah, yeah. and this guy's started catching them 45 minutes in I've gone on my pole and had a really good run of fish started catching fed some ground bait at the start loose feeding maggots and emp fishing a light rig through the water um most of them were sort of two to eight ounce little barbel, putting fishing net all the time. And I had an odd better one as well. I had one about mm. pound and a half, a couple about a pound. Portuguese kid is doing even better though at this point. And it got to a stage in the match three hours in where he's so far ahead of me and the rest of the section. I, if I were to try and beat him, I'd have to make a big gamble yeah, yeah. and potentially not catch any more fish. How far ahead do you think he was at this point? Three kilo ahead. So, that, so three, all... three, three and a half kilo ahead. He's caught two or three real big ones on a waggler. So on this venue, that's quite a bit. Massive, yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the, you were actually the guy that won the local championship there a few months wow, okay. um, earlier. I know him. He's called Antonio and his son's called Pedro. Fish re I've actually <laughs> been next to him before in World Club Champs and wow, stuff like okay. that. Um, and it got to a point where Darren, the bank owner, came down and he's like, Matt, you're second to him. Wow. Do not do anything different. Keep doing what you're doing. Maintain second. Like, got to just make sure you come second to him. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did that. I ended up with five kilo, 830 or 840. Um, brilliant days fishing, super confident, caught steady all day, caught on all the methods that we'd yeah, practiced yeah. on. Portuguese lad weighed nine kilo, absolutely blitz the section. Um, but it gets better on day two. I'll talk to you about that when you ask us about it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But to come second to Portugal and to catch on everything we caught on and for us as a team to have the result we did after that first day, we were yeah. second to Portugal. Which is brilliant. Just by two points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were buzzing and we, we basically ended that day as a team thinking we could win this and mm. at that half time point in a European championship there's, n there's only one better place to be than second and it's first and we are exactly like this yeah, scratching yeah. at them and you've got the chase as well haven't you do you mm. know what I mean you've got the something to go and get haven't you where the Portuguese have just got to kind of hold you off mm. um, Matt I want to bring it back to something you said just very quickly when um Sorry, who was it that came down and told you you were second? Bicko, Darren Bickerton. Yeah, when he when he came down and told you, uh, at what point in the match did he tell you, look, you're second, you need to 
you maintain know, maintain that. that. Yeah, yeah. We'll Probably put, like hour and a half in. So that's quite early into yeah, into yeah, yeah. the day. What does that do to your um to c- your kind of match approach? Because that's like you've got a big bit of news. You know mm. that you know. Come back to what James said. You, you're in a position where you obviously don't want to let the team down. Does that does that spur you on or does that shake you a little bit? What does that do to you kind of personally? You just, uh, sounds crazy, but you kind of get used to it and you just work on the feedback you've got. Like I knew I was still getting bites. It's the same old age old thing of if you're catching some fish, don't come off it, don't stop. And right. while ever I'm we're putting fish in the net, um, no one else were going to, unless someone caught three or four really big fish, mm. they were never going to powerfully overtake me. And it sounds crazy, but having Hungary the other side of me and Holland the other side of them, I can see what's happening there. Right. I knew that okay. I knew that Antonio was winning the section next to me to my left. I can Nothing see you it. Do there. No, yeah, yeah. built a brick wall there. Right, got it. Didn't yeah. take that into account. But yeah. I can see I've got some other strong teams to my right. I know I'm beating them. Yeah, I can yeah. see I'm beating them. My Peggy, if anything, is slowly getting stronger, catching an odd bonus fish. Yeah. Like, felt in control of it is yeah. the best way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, 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 it does. Mm-hmm. Um, James, what about, talk me through your Saturday from start to finish. How how did you get on at your peg? Who were you fishing in between? Oh, who was I fishing in between? I had an Italian to my right. Um, and... Again, another strong team, if mm. I'm not, not wrong. And then I had a German to my left. Right, okay. Which... They're quite good at fishing, or very good at fishing mm. for catfish on a slider. They yeah. won it last time in Portugal. They did. Fishing oh, right. for so catfish you, on a so slider. So again, you're stuck in between two very good teams as well. Yeah, yeah. And my match was a little bit, sort of didn't go fully to plan what we thought. Mm. Where I was at that end of the match, it's a bit shallower. It's cl- the water is really, really clear. Mm. Like, ridiculously clear, yeah. isn't it? And... um a bit shallower and obviously there was a bit of weed and stuff like that obviously um but i started on a waggler caught a little barbel one a little bit better few fish it was going okay but in general looking up and down and speaking to the bank runners it, it yeah. was harder and after 40 minutes i've come in on the pole and i've had a little run but it's like type like pulling teeth a bit and it just wouldn't go for me right like okay. fully so back out fishing, actually b- reverted back to slider, and it was quite good fishing for catfish. And I thought this is this is good. Like looking about, I'm I'm doing all right. Here. Even though I'm catching cats, not bigger <laughs> barbel, mm. they're fast enough. And like Matt says, if you're putting fish in the net, you got to keep going. Yeah, of course. So I thought we're like an hour and a half in. I'd kept feeding the pole. And I thought I've got to have another look. And when I come in on it, I went bump, 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 and caught like a pound. And I thought. That's a Brucey Bones. Went back out. I'm not getting any bites. Why not? Just top top back up on the catfish show. Mm. Carry on feeding the pole back in the catfish show. The catfish for me on the first day were massive, and yeah, I probably yeah. caught ninety on a slider. So it was it was quite a, a busy day yeah, fishing yeah, catfish yeah, on definitely. the slider. But it just goes to prove about the practice and stuff like that. Fishing, setting the slider up, doing that. So, it so was important. Po- it's so it? vital yeah. for me on the first day. Yeah, yeah. And it it was so, so close in my section. <laughs> it was like four kilo, 700, four kilo, 600. Four, I had four kilo and... 950 then there was a four kilo seven something so you're all like it, it's so close and then yeah. right at the other end there was like a, a five kilo 100 or and 20 grams that beat wow. me by 20 60 grams and then an, another person who had like 500 Nothing grams all, more yeah yeah but that's you can't not keep putting fish in the net but it is the european championships that is the level mm. that you're at it's so so close isn't it you mm. have to you know the, the the margins are just too close, um, Matt. You told me come second day, you said it got a lot better. What happened there? Um, I were in the same sandwich that I were in the first day. <laughs> Hungary one side, Portugal the other. Not, I, not I, the same anglers. No, thankfully not the same angler. Right, okay. Um, but obviously you're like, oh, could do we out this again? Like, and he's got all his waggler odds out, and I know he, I know he knows, <laughs> I know he knows yeah, what yeah. to do. Bear in mind, I'm confident, Toe. You are. Yeah. I want to yeah. rip everyone's head off, right? Yeah. yeah. But they're two points ahead of us. They've had four section wins day before. Wow, okay. They they know what to do. So he must have been super confident too. Um, but I, I I had 
I'm not going to go on about it because I had virtually the same match as the day before, other than I caught a few fish on a whip short, which came back to what Simon sussed in um, the practice week. I had a really good start catching some little fish short, few fish on a slider, and then back on that pole. Um, and I ended up weighing five kilo and 40 grams. Obviously beat the Hungarian, but also managed to beat Portugal wow. next peg. He had four kilo eight hundred, so we had a proper ding dong battle. Yeah, it yeah. was Pedro, the local guy. Oh, he actually really? lives in Carouche. <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah, lovely bloke. You beat him on bloke. his own home. Venue. I did, <laughs> but I also took total advantage. And the minute that the whistle went, jumped up, shook his hand, and I was like, "Pedro, show me what Portugal do on this venue." And I was looking at all these rods and rigs and wow. grilling him, and I've written it all down. Do they show you as well? Is it? Yeah, is it yeah, all yeah. very. Kind I think of it helps that I beat him that he were like yeah you can have a look and yeah but yeah, he showed yeah. me everything he showed me everything he was yeah, brilliant that is brilliant though. yeah yeah and James what about your kind of second day you know you're two points behind chasing Portugal were you, were you fishing next to any Portuguese or no the Portuguese angler was two to my right and you could spot the Portuguese anglers for a mile off because they had a massive crowd of people behind mm. every one of them home didn't venue they? of course oh, isn't it god yeah, 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 um, yeah. noisy weren't they yeah, which <laughs> Every single time they caught a fish, even if it from that big to big, yeah, they clapped. So like you're fishing, and they're clapping, <laughs> and you're like, he's on for like his biggest match weight because obviously they're clapping all the time. But it's why it was winding me up. I wanted to catch even more. So, <laughs> but it spurred you on. To, oh, so it does spur you on. That, that yeah, must yeah. be hard not to, to let that get to you or rile you up or distract you or anything. It could easily go the other way, mm. and you could get down Rattled. about it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Down. yeah yeah but for me it made me want to beat him even more but i honestly thought that he in my head i thought oh he's actually beating me yeah, you think he must be empty in this place yeah exactly yeah, yeah yeah um my second day was a lot different couldn't really get many bites on a waggler or a slider which was weird and i caught all on the pole and it was just little runs of fish and what we spoke about in the week loose feeding and all mm. that and it was I was saying to Matt on the second day, it seemed a bit harder. Mm. The weights were all averagely good, but I think because everybody sort of reverted to doing the loose feeding and stuff like that, it sort of spread the fish out a bit more and they're right, a bit okay. harder to catch and stuff like that. But it, tur it turned out well. Um, I ended up with about five kilo, just over five kilo, mm. and beat the Portuguese kid by about 200 grams. So... <sighs> For us as a team, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. we all wanted to beat. If we all beat our Portuguese kid, and then someone, there's every chance. There's that, every chance that we could mm, win. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. must have been the moment when you guys all started to realise that you were beating the Portuguese in your section. That must have been when you were like, "We've done this." Because mm. when I walked up the bank, Will had beat his by one point. I'd beat mine by one point. Matt had, Matt had his. beat his by one point, and we were like, "Hang on, it's down there. It's all down to the last two sections." Yeah, yeah. Like at that point, we were. You beat, must have all we been running down him. the bank trying to get to the <laughs> next you, angle. You feel again. sick. Yeah, you, you yeah. physically See, feel sick waiting. That's for it. the bit I wanted to get onto yeah. next because because that moment where I, I know that you said that you have a rough idea, but there is there has to be some time where there's a level of uncertainty mm. that you just don't know. And like you said, you started to find out that oh, Matt's beat his Portuguese lad, you beat yours, we'll beat his. So then this uncertainty must, you must start to little, a little bit of hope come in. So what's that like? When, when did you all, did it happen as a team? When did you all start to kind of, when did this hope start to turn into kind of fact and hang on, we've actually done this. It was quite funny actually. I was sat in my box and um, obviously I hadn't looked at my phone all day. And I've, I've, been, I've weighed in. I'm sat waiting, thinking, what's going on? And I've picked my phone up to look, and there's, like, on the in-group WhatsApp. I'm, like, looking through the results. And um, <laughs> all five of the boards come on. And I was like, right, I'm going to have a little workout in my head. And my battery died. No! <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually did. So I was sat there thinking, oh, no. I really That's don't horrendous. know. What... I'd seen that Will had beat him. I knew I had. And I'd just seen that he had. And then my phone died. So it's not I enough I didn't know for... about that. Did you know? No, I didn't know about that. <laughs> but it's not enough to, to know for sure, is it? Oh, no. I, I, I only knew our three results. <laughs> what did you do? Well, I just sat there and I carried on packing my gear up. And I was listening to a few people cheering and that. And I was really unsure. And there was no one about, and I was like just praying that we'd done it. To so be I'm honest, getting that feeling in my stomach. I mm. know the result, but it all came down to Cameron, like where Cameron had come right, and where okay. his Portuguese lad had come. 
And um, so was you, was Cameron to the last yeah. uh, angler to yeah. you, you find me, out? Me, Will and Denty had all beat our Portuguese angler. Steve Hemingway had won the bottom section. Phenomenal display. He caught like 11 kilo. He won the match on the second day. Oh, wow. Which, again, comes down to that Thursday, practicing in that bottom box. So not wasted at yeah, all? Yeah, he absolutely blitzed it. Yeah, I think yeah. seven kilo a second. Oh, so he's really clean. Yeah, out. yeah. Good um, and it all came down to Cam and where Cam had come. And obviously, he did. He, Cam were in a really tough bit and just did absolutely brilliant. God, the nerves I think, must have been like when you know it's come down to one angle. Yeah, yeah. Did Cam come fifth? Fifth or sixth he came, right? But um, what I'll say about Cam, I can't do this podcast without, podcast without saying it. Cam's performance on the first day yeah. of the match was one of the best displays of angling I've seen in a long time. He drew peg E3 four, or 4. four. E4, bearing mm. in mind you've got all them end, all the end of that really good section, and Cam weighed 12 kilo something. Wow. Everyone around him caught four and five kilo, and he only got beat by the very end peg in the match who had a kilo more than him. Wow. Like his that performance from that peg for me, phenomenal. Like deserves that's a statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot a of a lot of the other teams said that that performance won us it. Mm. I yeah, think it yeah, did. Yeah. yeah, what a statement. So Let's get back to it. So you, you, you're going down, you're waiting to kind of see Cameron last day. What happened? Who found out first? How was the news broken? I um, I think I saw Darren walking along the top of the bank and he looked quite happy. Mm. And I was thinking, I think we've done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I generally do. And But there, it's just so much anticipation and we mm. didn't actually find out. We were all sat around a table having a beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hang on, sorry, let me stop you there. So you all went for a beer before you knew? We, we kind of that... knew because, like, not only had England management worked it out, but yeah, yeah. every other team had worked out the points because they need to know where they've come and they all had us down for winning. So, and, like, we worked it out pretty damn good. Like, yeah, it's all I, pretty I, accurate. I get that. Not, the, that. not that I'm arguing that, but, yeah, but yeah. you're not certain. No, it's no, not no, no. Solid. It, the, no. The time it's solid, You've Pope. gone for a beer, and you, it's <laughs> not... I'd have been, like, pacing up and down and... The time it's solid is when Fip said, yeah. put the result out. They go, here it is. And they, and they put a sheet on the internet that says England first. And that came through halfway down a pint. I bet the rest of the pint just went straight yeah, down onto yeah, yeah. the next there's one. A, there's it. a picture of it. As soon as it happened, I got a selfie, didn't I? It's probably on yeah. screen yes. now. Yeah, yeah. Um, that must have just been... Both of you, talk me through. When that moment came out, that board came out, what happened? That was it. Big was it, cheers. Cheers, the emotions. Yeah. Just relief, really. Yeah. Like, Yeah, we'd won. Yeah, yeah. Mate, incredible. The whole thing is incredible. I feel really privileged to have been able to... You know, because I followed you guys <laughs> over the month. I've seen the mm. prep. I've seen the work and everything that goes into it, not just from but from you two, but from f from the entire team. Mm. And I want to just personally, I want to say a quick something about Will because, and this, I thought this was a real credit to Will's character because when I spoke to Will, um, when I was at my mum's barbecue Sunday, yeah, we yeah. all found out that you'd won. Um, I spoke to Will for a good few minutes. Didn't even know he'd won bronze. Didn't no. say anything. I hadn't seen the board. He didn't see anything. All that man had to speak about was his, you know, admiration and just how proud and pleased he was for the entire team and the mm. achievement. And I had no idea he won bronze. And I just think as a as a team captain, that's an incredible character trait, person trait or whatever. So for anybody that knows Will, will know what I'm on about. Yeah. You, even if you've watched Will's podcast, like I, yeah. I've got, I'm probably talking here when I say this on behalf of all... Not just the England team now, but the world's team, the kids' teams, people who have been in the England team previously and now aren't a part of it. And yeah. probably talking ahead of myself, people who do come into the England team in the future, right? Will is such a massive influence. Yeah. He's so yeah, yeah. powerful. He is, his talent for fishing is ridiculous. Yeah, like yeah. he sits amongst the best on the planet. And and it is exceptional, time after time after yeah, time yeah, again. His yeah. experience is second to Just none. Another level, isn't and, it? Like, and yeah, yeah. This last week in particular is sort of one of the first times he's been made a captain as such. And his he was the glue, not just in the tactics, but mm. communicating the tactics between management, the team, different people within the team. When we when we sat in the um, bungalow doing our gear is in our room 
what do you think to this? What do you think to that? Have you got this? Have you got that? He's in Simon's room. Si, this, that. He's in with Cam and Steve. Then he's back to us. And it, 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 he is such an influence on that team. And yeah, yeah. the reason for it is because if you split Will in half, cut Will in half, ripped his heart apart, it's just got Team England right across it. Yeah, like, yeah you can so, tell that. And, and Will were only 100 grams off winning individual European champion. You know, if it had won individual, yeah, he yeah. wouldn't have mentioned it to you on that interview. No, he wouldn't have done. He wouldn't have mentioned I, I, it. I, I can guarantee he wouldn't have done. I had no idea. I actually felt a little bit embarrassed. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. know, but it, I just, I sat there and thought, wow, what an incredible achievement for him personally. And he, all he, I could just see it and everybody watching will see it from his interview. Mm. He was just so emotional and so pleased for the team. Yeah, yeah. You, thought, you know now that, that bronze medal that he won there, yeah, yeah. that completes the whole set of international medals for Will. So Will has gold. Incredible. Listen to this. Will Raisin has got gold, silver and bronze, individual and team in every single international competition. That alone is a totally <laughs> mental soundbite, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's crazy. I think How it's a, mental is that for an achievement? I think um, someone said he is the actual complete international angler mm. now. Yeah. He's the only complete international is angler. Is he the only one with all of them? I'm sure that's what wow. Tamas said to him, yeah. Wow. Well, fair play. I mean, fair play. You know, what, what an achievement. But bring it back to, obviously, the, um, you know, the team and, and the match. You guys have, you know, you've now won. You know, that's it. Ceremonies, gold medals. What was that all like? Because uh, what I like from, from when we you showed me clips and stuff before, is it right that you have a banquet and everybody has to clap mm. you as you walk in? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. what was that like now to be the ones, you know, being clapped to walk, you know? Really good, mate. It's great. You're just sort of smiling all the time. You've Do, got your medals around Is it set neck. in for you by this point? Yeah, I think you yeah, had, yeah, hasn't it? Do, yeah. yeah? I think you had. Yeah. yeah. No. Brilliant, brilliant. Look, I'm aware um, we are type of time this morning. I've actually checked my watch and you've got two minutes. Oh, wicked. <laughs> um, so this whole thing has been like a vlog style podcast mashup. We, we're not really sure what it's going to be, but it is going to be epic, mm. isn't it? Um, however, we are in the podcast studio, so we are going to end it in typical podcast fashion. I hope you have come prepared. Have you boys bought a gift for me? Yeah, we've got a gift. <sighs> I'm going to give it yet and Denty can explain how it came about. Right, okay. I don't I think I don't think they'll ever Is that what I think it I is? I don't think they'll ever have been one of these on any podcast ever done before, and I doubt they ever <laughs> will be again. Um there's a good reason for it, and there's one particular man to thank for it, but that's your gift. Is that what I think it is? The actual gold medal, Toby. From this year's. But I'm a little bit speechless, actually. I didn't Yeah, I wouldn't have expected anything like Hold it up to the camera, Tobes, come on. That one there, yeah? Yeah. That's it. Look at that. You know, incredible. it feels heavy as well. It's like, do you know? Yeah, it's mm. it's incredible. But who's whose gold medal was that? Well, it was yeah. a team of eight, weren't it? It's a team of eight, and you actually get nine medals. So when they were handing them out, I said to Mark, I said, obviously we're doing the podcast to finish it off. Is there any chance? <laughs> and Mark kindly said. Oh wow! He was going to put it in a, the I've got my hairs have gone up. Yeah, yes, yeah. it has. <laughs> So, yeah, he kindly said that we could take it. Wow. That needs, here. um, that's, that's a special gift. That, it's that, cool, that yeah. needs a, um, we need to be getting that framed or something like that with some yeah, nice definitely. pictures from you guys. And I think that needs to be, um, that needs to be going up on the wall somewhere. 100%. Yeah, we'll yeah, get yeah. a nice picture at team celebrating and get Abs it put in a little frame. Yeah, absolutely. A little plaque yeah. for the lot. Yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. What a, you know, wow. Just to be able to, um, you know, see it, hold it, and everything mm. like that. Thank you. That's a really amazing gift. It's cool, isn't it? It's really cool. I didn't really expect cool. that, honestly. I didn't. I, that <laughs> the actually, the, the guests are going to have to up their game now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That is now the level, a European gold medal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can beat that, I'll be well and truly yeah. impressed. Guys, we will end it there. Um, once again, congratulations to you both and the rest of the team, Mark and everybody involved, because that's just a tremendous achievement. So, can I say one, one final thing? Yes. Um, just like obviously the team um everyone amazing thank you like from me personally i know james would probably say the same but um we also get help we get help from the angling trust they mm. sort of fund some of the trips so a massive thank you to them yeah of course um and also census uk provide our team with ground bait for the whole trip they have done throughout pretty much all the history of the England team. Mm. They do it year after year. John Desk and Gilles Cordan, Alex Cordan from Census were there. 
they all came and shook our hands afterwards and like just want them all to know we appreciate the support we get from mm-hmm. them people um, and and even dynamite baits no relation to the england team yeah, at yeah. all even they gave us a load of hemp for the trip stuff like that we get help from so many different people you all know who you are mm. and speaking on behalf of all the team really appreciate it gang well yeah. look bobby is that on camera because that Hold on, every, everybody that's yeah. helped you there you know everybody that supported you guys in the team that's that's what it's led to and that's a fantastic achievement for everybody involved from you guys sitting on the box to everybody that's helped you supply bait and the rest of it so well done to everybody cheers mate yeah cheers <laughs> The Fishing Gurus Podcast.